What is going on everybody? I am back today to talk about a new release Netflix original film that to be quite honest I didn't know anything about before I went in to watch it other than I saw Natasha Lyonne and Elizabeth Olsen were in it and that was enough for me to want to watch the film and I realized after watching it that the director Azazel Jacobs has made two movies that I have seen previously Terry starring John C. Riley, which I really enjoyed and then The Lovers which is actually a film I reviewed for the A24 arc archive that I thought was really well done. It had very great performances. It was really well shot. And so I've enjoyed two of his previous films and I'm really excited to talk to you about his three daughters today. His three daughters is directed by Azazel Jacobs. Emotions run high when three estranged sisters reunite in a cramped New York City apartment to watch over their ailing father during his final days. So I was looking forward to watching this movie, especially with the powerhouse performers that are in this film, and it was really well done. I enjoyed the movie. I don't think it's necessarily reinventing the wheel by any means. It's not doing anything we haven't really seen before, but so much of what makes this movie effective is the performances from these actresses. They are all three incredible. There are so many sequences of dialogue that are so tense and engaging and that each actress just does such an amazing job portraying each character and it's also very well shot and it's paced out very well for an hour and 40 minute movie and I'm looking forward to telling you about it today. So at the beginning of the movie we are introduced to these three sisters who are currently staying in an apartment with their dying father. Rachel, played by Natasha Leone, who is the one currently living at the apartment and taking care of the father mostly. And we see that she spends a lot of her time gambling on professional sports. She's constantly going outside to smoke weed. The other sisters kind of yell at her for smoking in the house. She has a boyfriend that she's seeing that we're introduced later on in the film. And she's having a hard time going in and out of her dad's room now. And you can tell the situation is really getting to her, but she's doing her best not to let it show. And then we're introduced to Katie, played by Carrie Coon, who also lives in New York City, just a couple of boroughs away, but never comes to visit and doesn't really do anything to take care of the father. You can tell that she lives a very high stress life, but throughout the early parts of the film, we can tell she is very uh, sure of herself. She constantly thinks she's right and has the best solution to every problem, which causes her to be very combative, and she gets into a lot of arguments with the other sisters. And the last sister is Christina, played by Elizabeth Olsen, who both the other two sisters see as kind of an airhead. She's constantly singing her dad Grateful Dead songs. She's a little bit all over the place. She's constantly on the phone with her family back home. She lives thousands of miles away. And so we get all three of these girls in this confined space. And Christina and Katie are from the same mother, but Rachel is from a different mother. And so there's a little bit of a distance because of that situation. But because all three of these women come from very different backgrounds, they clash heads quite often. And the entirety of the film is these three sisters going through this process of watching their father pass away. So like I said, I thought this movie was really well done. And I think the first thing you need to talk about with this movie and what makes it so effective is the incredible performances. These three actresses are all phenomenal and they all do an amazing job encapsulating these characters perfectly. Natasha Lyonne and Elizabeth Olsen in particular are phenomenal. I feel like their characters are very distinct and each one of them, there's so much more than what's just presented on the surface which is what I like. The, you can tell with Natasha Leone's character, she's constantly smoking weed and gambling, and she is the one who is going to inherit this apartment. And they kind of see her as she's getting whatever she wants, but you can tell the two other sisters, at least Katie's character in particular, sees her as entitled for some reason because she's getting this apartment. And you can tell she's like, this is my dad. This is all I've ever known. Like, I'm just here to take care of him. And all of the negative stereotypes that the two sisters have on her are so false when it comes to the reality of the situation. And you have Katie's character who, like I said, you can tell she's making phone calls back home. She's incredibly stressed and there. You can see a love for her father, but you can also see kind of this 
just wanting to get it over with and and just not really being present in the moment. It's kind of just constantly worrying about the next thing. And then Christina, who is, you know, trying to be the peacekeeper for most of the movie, but loses it sometimes, which is which is completely and totally recognizable in this type of a situation. And so you put all three of them in this one space, which almost the entirety of the movie takes place in this apartment, except for a couple of moments where characters will step out and it just makes the tensions rise so much. And because these three actresses are so phenomenal, it's easy to immerse yourself into and kind of lose the fact that you're watching a movie. It feels so much more like a real life. I also loved the way this movie was shot. There's a lot of attention to detail on close-ups and just where people are placed in a frame. There's a wall in particular in their living room that, that separates their living room from this hallway area. And there's so much symbolism in that separation and in the way the director utilizes that to frame certain shots. And I love that for such a simplistic film, there's a lot of attention to detail in the placement of the camera. And there's also really great utilization of the sound design because of the medical equipment keeping the father alive. So it's always in the back of your head, even when they're in another room or they're trying to, to build some separation for a moment to get a break. And they have a nurse who comes in and works for part of the day. And I just think the world is very immersive and it's easy for you to invest yourself in the story and in these characters, even though you don't see the dad's face for most of the movie. And I think this is a subject that anyone can understand. I've talked about this in a few of my YouTube videos before, but like death is inevitable and death is all around us, but somehow as human beings, we never really come to terms with it. And there's always this fear and uncertainty surrounding death. And when it's not your own death, but it's the death of someone you love and that you care so much about, there is no natural reaction to it. You don't really have any sort of uh, understanding of how you will act or the decisions that you will make in that moment, whether that be rational or irrational. And I remember very vividly when my grandmother passed away, who was very, very close to me, and, and just like living through that and trying to process what life is like without her and reminiscing on positive memories, but then thinking about all the other things my family had to do, whether that be clearing out her house or uh, closing accounts, doing all of those things. And it's like there's real life things you have to do, but there's also thinking about like how it's unfair that you're losing that person. And I think what Azazel Jacobs does here is poses a lot of really fascinating questions about that initial gut reaction to someone dying. And I think that it's very thought provoking. And there's a lot of conversations, especially towards the third act, that are really well done and thoughtful. And in and, and the first part of the movie, there's a lot of practical elements to it, whether that be conversations surrounding do not resuscitate forms and like when a person gets so bad, they can't really sign off on that anymore. But there are people who their lives are prolonged that it's not really living anymore because they're, they're being kept alive, but they're essentially in a comatose state. And I just thought it was fascinating all of the things that Azazel Jacobs was able to incorporate in the movie. And it's very emotional. I do think, like I said, I mean, we've seen movies like this before. It's not like the subject matter is anything super new or inventive. And there are some moments in the movie that I feel like the pacing could have been a little bit better. But I think this subject is fascinating. And because it's so real and close to home, and because it's something everyone will experience at some point, losing someone you're close to and even losing a parent, I just think it's very poignant. And I really enjoyed this, and I'm really glad that I watched it. And if any of this sounds interesting to you, I think it's definitely worth checking out on Netflix. So have you seen His Three Daughters? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. I thought this movie was really well done and I very much enjoyed it. As always, if you can like the video and subscribe to the channel, helps me out a lot and lets me know the type of content you're looking for. I'm always putting out new material and look forward to getting more out for you in the near future. And as always, everyone, thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.